What's up, Gear Junkies? Welcome to another episode of Gear Talk. I am, as always, your humble host, Jason Girallo. You know, they say that tone is in the fingers, but I think it also resides somewhere else. Okay, so what I have with me today is what people claim to be possibly the most recorded amp in all of history. Now, whether that's true or not uh, is really uh, up to debate and not one for me to decide. But I have the venerable and awesome Deluxe Reverb. This is the 65 reissue Deluxe Reverb. It's the actual tube amp. It's not the modeler that uh, Fender released uh, fairly recently. Uh, it is the real deal, uh, and it weighs as much as the real deal. Um, so, uh, what uh, is good? What is bad? Um, we're going to listen to some tones today, and uh, I'll let you guys make the decision. Uh, I'll just weigh in on some things that I've noticed in my time owning it. So uh, first off, this is uh, not a color adjustment issue. It's, it's a black face amp, uh, but it's in a, a limited edition uh, eggplanty purple uh, Tolex. Uh, so it's uh, kind of a little different uh, with the gold um, or tweed uh, grill. Uh, I think it's kind of sharp looking. Uh, it's sort of up to you to decide if you like this version or the original black. They are the same price. Uh, this is just sort of uh, a little bit of a unique style. Um, of course, uh, Deluxe Reverb comes with uh, your your switch to turn on and off uh, both reverb and um, uh, vibrato, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, the few things that uh, I definitely would mention about those effects, first off, if you look, if you can see my reverb channel, it's at 2.5. Uh, one of the things that, uh, this is Deluxe Reverb, and boy is it verby. Um, anything above about four and it just becomes uh, nothing but reverb. It's pretty intense. I really do like the tremolo or the vibrato on this. Uh, it's really nice, easy to control with just intensity and speed. Um, like I said, the one thing I don't care for uh, is uh, the verb is a little too sensitive. Uh, also, something that you may not think about, but for an amp as expensive as this, and this is uh, you know right around fifteen hundred dollars, um, it only comes with a two-band EQ, so you can only control the treble and the bass response. There is no mid-range EQ built into the amp, and that goes for both the normal and the vibrato channels. Um, that's a real shame. Another thing to think about with this amp, it is twenty-two watts, uh, which uh, in tube land is kind of a middle middle wattage type amp. I wouldn't say it's super powerful if you were playing an arena uh, or something huge. I would definitely you know say either mic it or maybe choose a larger amp. Um, but for home practice and for small gigs, uh, unless your drummer is just a heavy-handed monster, this thing is very very loud. Uh, when I first uh, took it home, I turned it on actually before I left the store to try it out. And as you probably know, I'm not a great guitarist, so I tend to play when I'm practicing or, or trying things out in the, in the guitar store, kind of a lower volume, so I don't, you know, make other people hold their ears. Uh, but at, at two, this sucker is screaming loud, and um, the beautiful thing about that is it's really got a lot of headroom uh, before it makes you uh, cover your ears. So if you're if you're a clean player. It's awesome. If you're someone who wants to put a pedal board in front of this, uh, awesome. I, again, another downside, though, this does not have an effects loop. Uh, it's kind of a big oversight. I know it's a 65 reissue, uh, so obviously that wasn't a thing. But uh, no effects loop on this, so it is going to be direct in if you're going to be putting a pedal board in front of it. But uh, very clean, lots of headroom. Um, but in order to get that beautiful tube distortion, you got to be putting this thing pretty close to the top, you know, eight, nine, 10, seven is kind of edge of breakup um, that I've noticed. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, dual inputs on both the, the normal and the vibrato channel. Um, I don't really know why Fender uh, included both, you know, double, double inputs. Um, to me, I, I tend to only plug into uh, the vibrato channel. I mean, to have the reverb and uh, to have, you know, the uh, the vibe all there, uh, and then just foot switch to turn them off. 
unless you're really going to do all that with a pedal, in, in which case then, yeah, the normal channel makes sense. But um, for me, the vibrato channel is sort of where it's defaulted to. Um, super loud uh, to the point where if I'm playing at home and I want to do a little bit of tube overdrive and I don't have a pedal board out, um, I actually absolutely have to put a power soak in front of it. So this is the Bugara uh, power soak. It's about 120 bucks. It's super cheap uh, for what it is, um, you know, to get something by Captor or other uh, brands there's you know 500 or more uh, with the one downside I think being that there is although there is a line out uh, it doesn't have a cab emulation whatsoever so it's just a dry line out um, but but that also being said and the the, the big pot here to control uh, you can probably hear that it's kind of scratchy um, but who cares? It doesn't get hot, which is impressive considering it's taking in all that power. Uh, super easy to connect. It's just, you know, cable into here, cable out into the back of the speaker. Use a speaker cable. Please do not use just a regular instrument cable. You will not have good results uh, for that. Um, but uh, with that all, um, super awesome amp. I love it. I love the sound of a tube amp. You know, modeling is getting better and better every year. Uh, but there is absolutely something to be said about good old fashioned tube amps. Now, I did say it was heavy, um, but for its size, it's actually one of the lighter amps. Um, at least I found it's not devastatingly heavy. I can pick it up and carry it around and I have a bad back. Um, it's not super big. It's not, you know, it's not, a, it's not a twin reverb or something like that where you got two speakers in it. So it's it's not super duper big, um, but to to uh, to get that beautiful tube response is awesome. Uh, like I said, I wish it had a um, mid range control, um, but again, you know that is just what it is. Like I said, it's a sixty five reissue. This is the PCB board uh, reissue. So 64 reissue is hand wired and probably costs like 28, 29 to $3,000. Uh, the 65 is PCB board, um, which, you know, take that as you will, a uh, little less repairable, of course, um, definitely not as boutique as the 64 reissue. Um, but it does, uh, still have what I think is a great tone. Um, if you absolutely want hand wired, you know, you're going to pay for it. That's just how it works these days. Um, I would say probably the one uh, other downside just to tube amps in general, not calling out this one in particular, is just with everything going on in uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine, uh, it's a little bit harder to come by tubes these days. So take that into account if you're planning on buying one of these and using it extensively, uh, because if you do need to replace a tube, it's a little bit pricier or harder to get. You might have to be waiting for a little while, uh, or your selection will just be limited. Uh, so that is something to be considered. Considered. Uh, but beyond that, you know, there's really not a whole lot of downsides. Yeah, it's super loud, um, but uh, that's kind of what you want, right? Um, so if you're going to buy this, I highly encourage you to get that power soak uh, just so that you can play it at bedroom levels. Uh, it really is an amp designed to gig with. Uh, again, like I said, not arenas, but uh, if you're playing arenas, you're not watching me anyway. This is a great amp for coffee shops, small gigs, practice sessions. Um, of course, it's a tube amp and it doesn't have modern you know, technology in it. So there is no cab emulations, IR, all that stuff that doesn't exist on the back end of this. It is literally just a row of tubes and uh, a cable and a power switch and a standby switch. Like there's no uh, special, you know, where you can plug this direct out or anything like that. Uh, it is really a true cab, uh, uh, you know, combo. So if you want to record with this, you're going to have to put a mic in front of it, which is either a good or a bad. It's up to you, uh, depending on what your, what your needs are. Um, I don't find it terribly hard to put a mic in front of it. The only challenge that I find is, and you might hear him, is I have a three-year-old uh, and he doesn't tend to respect my recording. Uh, schedule. So if he's having a temper tantrum, I can't record. That's just what it is, uh, unfortunately, uh, with with all that. But um, and, and you might hear that actually on the samples. So with that being said, let's go ahead and flop over. I'm gonna play some samples uh, that I recorded. Uh, again, uh, not anything super groundbreaking, but just give you an idea of what the amp is capable of. A few sound samples. Uh, as always, YouTube compresses the daylights out of these videos. So if you want to hear your best option for audio definitely wear a pair of headphones it'll help a little bit uh, and also um, 
I would say go to a store and try it out for yourself. You know, reviews can only take you so far, uh, especially when it comes to something like an amp. It's a very personal decision, probably as personal as it gets in the in the guitar world, in my opinion. Uh, so definitely uh, go try it out. Good news is these are not super hard to find. Most guitar stores, big or small, tend to carry uh, deluxe reverbs because they are so common. Um, I wouldn't let its commonality deter you. Uh, beautiful thing about something like this is it does take pedals so well. So just because the platform is common doesn't mean your sound will be. Uh, so I do like that about this amp. So with that being said, let's hop over and listen to some sound demos. All right, so what'd you think? Do you like the sound of the deluxe verb? Or eh, are you not so sure? The one thing I did notice is as you crank that gain up, or really not gain, but as you crank the volume up and it starts to tube distort, once you get uh, close to 10 on the amp, uh, it tends to get a little fizzy. It's, this is not a, a device made for tube distortion for metal, unless you like fizzy distortion. Um, it's really not made for that. It's, it's totally a, a vintage vibe. Uh, it is a 65 reissue, right? So uh, they weren't playing, you know, chug metal in 65. <laughs> Maybe somebody was, but it wasn't what they were playing with a Fender. Uh, there are better amps for that purpose out there on the market in the same price bracket. Uh, this is absolutely going to be a killer amp if you play country, if you play blues, if you play jazz, if you play classic rock, you know, pop, anything like that. You can really get those tones out of here beautifully. Um, I play a lot of blues and, you know, I, you know, with the power soak on and this thing cranked up to like eight, I get just a beautiful distorted sound uh, that I really like. I can model it how I want. Uh, if I want to do some more distortion, I can always add that on later once I'm in my digital audio workstation. Uh, so, yeah, this is just, a, you know, one of those as good as it gets kind of situations. Um, so I would I would highly recommend it. But, you know, again, depending on your needs, you may or may not need something this big, this powerful. So if you like what you've seen so far today, please consider subscribing, like, comment down below. Tell me what you think about this amp. Tell me about what you think about the channel so far, if there's anything I can do better. I certainly would love to improve. I want to build a community here on YouTube that talks gear, talks technology uh, from all walks of life with all experiences and backgrounds. So please consider writing a comment down below. I answer as many as I can personally. Um, definitely, like I said, like, share, comment, ring the bell, obviously, to get notified. I know you hear that from everybody, but this is just the starting out YouTube channel, and it really helps me to get some views. Uh, and, and again, subscribe if you can. Uh, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.